In Japanese anime, do none of the characters look Japanese? Because anime characters are cats. The goal of manga anime was neither Japanese nor Caucasian. The theory on if you pursue cute, it resembles a kitten, is influential. No matter how you look at the profile nose, it's not human. Japanese anime characters are cats, not westerners. So does that mean everybody that likes anime is a furry? Uh, okay, well, that settles it. Oh, this is very disappointing, man. This is the barefoot magician. Or is it real magic? <laughs> oh, I had to bought it. <laughs> Lydia. <laughs> Oh, oh, is that guy a magician or just street tricks, man? Yo, help, help us to understand. But also see and know what is this is. Is that the uh, sea monster? My people who are the Kikuyus, they've always believed in a god. They've always feared, reverent, really fear, not fear, but reverence. Um, that the minute they had, we are praying, they took off their heart and they prayed. So, so the, one of the things that uh, the, the, um, the colonialists used and exploited so well was that belief in a God. So how do you want us to pray? So they are saying, yeah, we know God. So now that we, you, we are together with you, we cannot face Mount Kenya. How do you want us to pray? Okay, But before that, we have to change your name. <laughs> so, you know, so because, because our, your name is not really acceptable, you know? So you have your name changed. So, I hope I'm answering you in a very big understanding because then your name is changed and whatever you are is put aside and it's like a new rebirth, you're a new person now who is into this. So we lived two cultures. In that church we prayed like this and a lot of people therefore how they look at this, Nimodongo. There's a, there's a white person, Muzungu, I don't even know what Muzungu means actually in Kiswahili. Muzungu, what does it mean? Anyway, Nimodongo in Kikuyu is, is uh, Muzungu, and then we, we are like saying to be considered civilized, to be considered better than who you are, you have to have this name. So the villagers longed to have those names. At the, yeah, you are named Joseph Haini. Is it Joseph Vivo? Is it a horse pipe or what is it? It sounds nice. And the Kikuyus, I must say, we love novelties. So people are rushing to be given those new names. English people, what you have just seen, I know you may not have understood some bits of information that grandmother was giving. Now she was talking about the colonialism era. When the English colonialists came here and went to our people. You know, many people have been affected in Africa and those countries that were colonized. They were led to the beliefs that they had. They were changed and given other beliefs. Now, just to be, to be exploited, that is very bad, man. But above all, we forgave you guys. And that's why we are here today sharing love. This brocade that love that your grandparents did not give by liking this channel and sharing it out there to the world, man. And those people that were affected by those colonialism times, I'm very sorry to you. I feel the same way. Maybe even this coming aliens is what they'll do to us. Exploit to us that they are good and exploit us. What do you think about it? Please tell us. These things are not right. English, no, I'm very... I love you. Just me just say lots of love. Let's keep watching. There's a video that I 100% legitimately play in my mind when I'm tired. 
I say good. Listen to this video. Have you ever heard this? It's amazing. I don't think I he would call me up or pull me aside with some major problem, some issue that was going on. And he'd say, boss, we got this and that and the other thing. And I'd look at him and I'd say, good. And finally one day he was telling me about some issue that he was having, some problem. And he said, I already know what you're going to say. And I said, well, what am I going to say? He said, you're going to say good. <laughs> awesome. He said, that's what you always say. When something is wrong and going bad, you always just look at me and say good. And I said, well, yeah. When things are going bad, there's going to be some good that's going to come from it. Didn't get the new high-speed gear we wanted? Good. Didn't get promoted? Good. More time to get better. No, I think now that is what we are talking about. The positivity in this guy is just encouraging. That's what we are talking about. Positive vibes, <laughs> good energy till the end. Watch these videos, man, with a positive mentality. Don't hate. Just like. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you see this video. We shall see some guys. How oh, some guys here give God a show. Like now this old man, he might seem old, but the skills that he possesses are unbelievable. You see, this sheet of thing that he has been given here, he'll mix colors and make that in the ink of that color. Do you know how crazy that is? And even he does not use a measure or a liter to measure the amount of ink that he's mixing. Just his eyes, he, has made, he must have perfected this job, man. He has done it for years. So that means when you do something for a long time, you become good at it. Oh, I think we should follow that as an example. Understand? Become good at doing good. True, true, true. So please, like this video, share. Watch till the end. That is a good gesture of goodness. Tomorrow, come here to this channel. Do the same. And you realize that with the time you'll be a very, very good person than you are before. Not that you are bad, but something will have improved. You see? No. Does anyone else notice that it's now completely intolerable to be with certain people, having certain conversations, and doing certain activities? For example, I am noticing that if I'm having a conversation about something that just doesn't matter to me so much, I feel such resistance even more. I can't even fake it anymore. I can't even put on a smile and engage in this awful, boring conversation for much longer. Um, I don't know if that's you. It is a sign that we're elevating our frequency and vibration and we can no longer tolerate anything that is not a match. Now you hear people in the spiritual community talk about a split that's happening, a split from 3D to 5D and what that looks like. I believe this is what it feels like. It's like I can no longer tolerate being in this space with you. I will not reach out to you. I will not seek your company anymore. I just cannot tolerate it. It's it's almost painful to be in this situation because it goes against every cell in my body and who I believe I am and what I stand for. So an example is just like having a conversation about the weather. For goodness sakes, like how long can we talk about weather here? I'm so done talking about the weather, you know? Not because it's it's boring, but it's because it just doesn't it doesn't work for me when I would rather and get more from having conversations about things that really matter. And the more I talk to my friends, the more I'm hearing the same story that they just cannot tolerate this job that they're in and they will not go back even if the money is just way better than anything else. Even if they could make so much money and do what they want with the rest of their lives, they will not tolerate it. They will not be in those spaces. So if this is you, you are increasing your vibration, your frequency, and you're no longer resonating with these things that are in your physical environment. You are consciously choosing what is more in alignment for you because you're moving into 5D. Mm. Okay. This tiny robot may be our only chance to save the ecosystem. It sounds crazy, but this little innovation can reforest the whole planet, saving thousands of endangered species and replenishing our natural resources. So, what is this wonder robot that will change the face of the Earth? 
here's how it works. All you need is to place it on the ground, and it will slowly start burying itself. If you attach a seed to it, the robot plants it deep underground. It behaves just like a hygromorph, a natural structure that changes shape in response to the environment and its conditions, like humidity. Morphing Matter Lab, a team of researchers behind the innovation, came up with this simple yet genius design that has three anchor points that prevent the structure from flipping over or falling down. It always faces downward at a specific angle to penetrate the ground and plant itself. The secret is in the number of coils. More coils will soften the structure, but having too few of these coils won't have enough thrust force for the actuation effect. By drilling the seed deep enough, the structure keeps it safe underground from natural threats like fires, rains, or animals. When the robot comes in contact with moisture, the wood expands, but the inner layer cells do it faster than the outer layer, causing it to coil. When it dries, it changes speed again with the inner layer cells pushing the seed deeper into the soil. The choice of materials for these robots became oak wood, one of the strongest and most accessible. Back in the lab, they run a series of chemical processes to make tiny pieces of wood pliable and keep its strength. Then they introduce a mechanical molding to produce this intricate structure. It's a unique design of a robot because it doesn't require any more materials to be made from. No synthetics or plastics are involved, which are already damaging our planet. Wood is biodegradable, so it won't become a waste in forests. One of the most important tests they conducted was airdropping multiple seeds from drones. As a result, such cases maintained a success rate of 90%. What's more convenient is that robots can be implanted with symbiotic species, like fungi and nematodes that help to increase the survival rate of a plant in a natural environment. Maybe a robot is not the right name for it. Instead, let's call it a copy of the erodium plant. This plant produces seeds with a hydromorphic tail-like structure that helps the seed to propel itself into the ground. It then coils and uncoils, trying to drill the seed further into the soil. This plant was an inspiration to the team, but it had its downside that needed to be fixed, its low success rate. Erodium seeds have a hard time drilling themselves into the ground, and harder terrains bring their chances to zero. So that's why these engineers took a stance and improved the design to make it work all the time. What's more fascinating is that the robot can hold various seeds and plant every wood type, enabling the possibility of reforesting all terrains on the planet. With innovations like this, it's only a matter of years before the world will start recovering to its original look. Do you know those angels that have been called the fallen angels? We see no fallen angels. That's a concept that humans have made out of the good and bad thinking. So we didn't have Satan at the time? That's an imagination of people doing bad things, isn't it? So there had to be a name given it. And unfortunately, it has been given to one of our own. Who is still with you? Yes. You call him Lucifer, but he is a very light angel, not a fallen angel. Satan is the evil you see in the world, the dichotomy of good and bad and evil have been man-made th thoughts. God is not a punishing God. It is a solid state of unconditional love and would not send those who would harm, only to enlighten. Have you met God? Yes. What is God? Solid state of unconditional love. It is not one who sits on a mountain with white hair and a long beard, demanding one be smitten or one be saved. It is not that. You all have the power of God, the creator, that is you. 
you are made in that likeness. It is the beliefs of not being that that has harmed you. Why is there so much evil on this planet? And there is evil. That is coming from beliefs of not being good enough. But Unworthy. Why?